All right. So today's our main topic will be the web design. But um, um, before we get into that, some of you asked me to um, show you the DAW, DAW logic, how we can put together music quickly. You know, I've, I've done the demonstration many weeks ago, but uh, I think that's that's one of the interesting ones. So I, I'll, I'll do that again. And then, so let me see if you can hear it. Do you hear the sound, drum sound? Okay, so what it does, it's got the motion sensor and uh, it's a little tiny computer in here, or I should say microcontroller that I've been programming. And uh, it's got a little bit AI um, component to it. So it reads how I move my hand and uh, it translate uh, into musical expression. So I'm gonna demonstrate a little bit for you. So that's just a drum sound, but um, if I switch to instrument like a marimba sound, So thank you. Um, so the idea came from um, music therapy originally. Um, my wife happens to be a music therapist. Uh, she wanted to have an interesting instrument uh, working with the client, um, not just the, you know, handbells and uh, tambourines, the typical um, music therapy instruments, nothing wrong with that, but uh, something more exciting for the clients. And I started thinking and uh, using motion sensor to make a musical expression. And I spent, you know, some years developing this, and this is only one in the world. And as we learned about patent and copyright, uh, I have a patent uh, part of this um, uh, idea. So anyway, um, Okay, logic. I don't think I showed you my template. You know, the concept of template in DAW is somewhat important for uh, composers like me. You can you can start from scratch, nothing. But uh, if you have sort of like um, painter artist, you have a palette of different colors paint on your desk, so you can you know quickly choose your favorite colors. Same same idea. I have favorite instruments here. Um, so drum kit, woodwind section. So if I open the folder, I have a piccolo flute and um, all the orchestral instruments like this. Brass section, horn, trombone, you know, trumpet, to, to up to um, down to tuba. And harp, celesta, percussion instruments. And string instruments. So first violin, second violin, viola, cello, basses, and a couple of uh, synthesizer sound, um, and special piano sound. So wherever you click, uh, it will play. Do you hear the sound? Just checking. Okay. I'm just playing my uh, little MIDI keyboard in front of me. And 
and um, this was the marimba. Uh, there are so many different articulations, you know, uh, that was flautando, but you can play something like this. Piccato, pizzicato, this is called the Bartok Pits. Hear the difference minor second and major second so different trio and uh, harmonics um, here's here's a little tool i wanted to show you um, so you can see this is called um, uh, stream deck Stream Deck, it's a physical buttons. So what it does is in here, I'm gonna show you the actual virtual instrument that I'm using here. So this is the first violin. It's coming from a BBC Symphony Orchestra uh, virtual instrument. So if you if we look at the legato, MIDI note zero. So C minus one is the lowest the bottom MIDI note, which is assigned as a zero. So it's sending, whenever I press this legato button, the device, the Stream Deck software is sending MIDI note zero, which is C minus one. Just in case if you're interested in using something like this, it's very important to check, use the virtual port, otherwise it doesn't work. So each button you can assign uh, different MIDI note. You see this is number two, this is number three, this is number 13. So yeah, this has been uh, amazingly helpful. So I can just play and then switch articulations really quickly. So instead of, you know, remembering which key was the uh, spiccato and it's hard to remember sometimes. And of course, Stream Deck um, is not only for MIDI, but also uh, great for uh, web stuff or even controlling zoom. So if I go into zoom mode, I have preset. So this button right here is a muting my voice. Mute, mute video, share screen, uh, exit, you know, leave session, stuff like that. You can program all of these. So um, one more thing is that um, uh, not just the hardware version, there's an um, app version. So I, I also have app version on my phone, iPhone. And um, on campus, I cannot use it because it has to be on the same network Wi-Fi and the computer has to be on the same network to, to communicate, but I can use this at home. On the same network and then the beauty is that i can use siri hey siri spiccato so i tell siri to uh, change the articulation okay any questions so far do you have a class specifically for DAW series? do i have a specific class for DAW? 
Is that your question? Yes. Okay. Um, other courses coming up, recording portfolio, recording technology. Um, yeah, we will, we would be using DAW and, uh, you can certainly learn quite a bit of it. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So, and I would usually go with, uh, drum sound. So first thing you need to decide is the tempo. So here's the tempo marker. Um, let's use 96 and also key signature. That's very important. Full four, three, four, uh, common time, full four. Um, the key, did I say um, time signature? Yeah, time signature and key signature, it doesn't matter. You can change it later. And you have a metronome activated and this is count in. So now I should have a drum track. So now I have hi-hat selected. So let's start with hi-hat and get a basic rhythm. Here comes the bass drum and symbol section and then tom tom So now we have the basic drum pattern for uh, full eight measures. Okay. And then next, uh, we can start putting together chord progression and um, uh, anything we want. So usually piano sound. Um, add the chord progression to it. So I'm selecting the piano layer. One, two, three, four.
next instrument, um, bass, maybe. So there are many different bass sound you can choose from. So these are uh, built-in library sound. That sounds good. So one. kind of side dishes well strings is not side dishes but uh, it's an important one so let's add string section um, to this so I want to use flautando some horns that's so powerful um, trombones change the volume it's sort of a rough mix here it's same thing as a fader um, okay let's see fix a little bit there so I can see the timing very clearly like this way and uh, the first note is so loud um, so you can um, change let's see here note velocity so this represents how loud 
each note is. So start with softer. <laughs> So this is how you edit um, each note. And if um, uh, I thought there was a timing issue somewhere, let me double check once again. This note is so soft. bit too early so I'm adjusting the position so you can change the duration as well as position or even notes See, there's a grid right there, so I need to bring it a bit later. Perfect. All right. So that's how you can, you know, edit each note, velocity, um, and you can always change the sound as well. Okay, so now we've got the basic sort of chord progression and rhythm. And now we can add some kind of melody if we want to. Um, so let's create another new instrument after this new. So when you click here, this is um, adding new track. And then particularly you're gonna select uh, software instrument. If you select audio, it's gonna be a you know real audio uh, through microphone <clears throat> or you can connect your guitar but in this case software instrument and the empty channel that's fine and create so now we have a new track right here and uh, we need to choose a uh, instrument so anything's fine piano sound or uh, synthesizer there are thousands of <clears throat> sounds available but just quickly uh, Stanway grand piano that's fine a little bit brighter than the earlier piano. Improvisation solo, I would just do keep keep um, playing until I'm happy with. So <clears throat> this is just a uh, quick one take. But usually I do many, many times. So that's the workflow. And then um, as we talked about the level, remember um, LUFS last week. So how do we finalize this track for broadcast or streaming? So let's, let's do that. Um, so next step would be normally um, mixing. So I bring out <clears throat> the mixing console and as you can see,
what you're looking at here is the uh, compressor on the piano track. So any solo, if you add a little bit of compression, the uh, solo sound will stand out, you know, cut through the mix. So that's one common practice to do. So that's good. And um, let's say, you know, we were happy with the mix and then I'm, I'm just going to show you how to finalize it. So here, obviously, we're, we, we're seeing the red that's overloaded, peaked. So mixture of these uh, tracks is creating too loud uh, signal. So we, we know that we can't go any beyond zero. So what we need is the limiter in order to uh, keep it down. Uh, you can use the built-in limiter um, or I'm going to introduce uh, you this, this is my favorite mastering limiter. It's called Fab Filter. It's a Dutch company and they're very popular these days. So you'll see the waveform here and the <clears throat> interactively you can push um, and limit the um, final signal. So what you're going to see here LUFS, remember? Um, so minus 14 for streaming, uh, 24 for um, TV broadcast, ceiling level. So minus one. So we should not have anything beyond minus one here. So that comes down to minus 14. And then let's play it. Here, minus 15.3, that's um, the current LUFS. That's the loudness level. So which means we still have a uh, little more than one dB. You can, we can uh, <clears throat> bring up the volume, make it louder. So we're going to increase the gain. So let's say uh, 1.3 dB right here. So it's a bit louder now. Okay, so we hit um, just exactly um, minus 14. So this level is perfect for YouTube streaming or um, Spotify, Apple Music, all of those streaming uh, platform. This is good to go. And um, you know, a lot of people push so much higher, but uh, again, it's it's no point of doing that because YouTube and those companies will bring down the volume if it's too hot. <clears throat> so um, matching to minus 14 level by looking at here, uh, integrated level. So it's an average energy level uh, at minus 14. That's perfect. Bounce project or section. So in Logic, you have several options. PCM, this is uncompressed audio. So this is the highest quality. And whenever you uh, submit to broadcasters, this is what you should use. And here, AIFF or a WAVE, either way is fine. And the resolution, 24-bit, 16-bit, or you could go up to 32. But 24 is kind of industry standard. And the uh, sample rate, yes, we talked about this many, many times. Uh, 44.1 for CD, 48 generally, you know, audio for video. So definitely good for YouTube and many other platforms. Um, since originally I've set up this um, Logic session at 48, there's no point of going up. Uh, even if you change it, uh, there's no difference but you can always down convert to 44.1, that's possible. And um, so PCM, and at the same time, you can create another MP3 file simultaneously. So this is where you can choose the compression ratio. All right, and a couple things to notice here, include audio tail. What does that mean? So 
this region I'm exporting is up to here. And if I don't click that, the music will be cut off right there. But since we have reverb running behind the scene, so even after this section finished, there's a slight little bit of reverb tail uh, exist. So we want to capture that. And if you check here, include audio tail, uh, the logic will make sure that every bit of sound, uh, you know, up to here will be captured. So this is important to check unless, you know, you wanna, uh, you have a very strict timing. Normalize, um, I would say off because we already took care of the uh, audio level using the limiter. So do not use this normalize. If you turn on everything, all the sound will be going up to zero. So in any case, it's not good for YouTube. So um, turn it off. Okay. And once I hit okay, uh, it will create two different files. Desktop. So you can name, um, let's say just a, a demo. Then one bounce. So this process is faster than real time. Now, if I look into my desktop, we have two files, demo one, demo one. One is AIFF, one is MP3. Yep. Same thing. Um, if you listen carefully, of course, um, MP3 sounds slightly less quality, um, but this one is for uncompressed audio. Importantly, we need to check the file size. <clears throat> of course, this is a very short piece, so it doesn't make much difference, but uh, it's 8.2 megabyte for the raw audio, the PCM. And this one, 576 kilobyte, it's tiny, right? It's the same duration, same audio, um, but this is heavily compressed. So this is great for um, sending a demo uh, via email. And then once it's approved, you send the original uh, uncompressed file to the TV station or wherever you're um, submitting to. So that's the workflow. All right, let's move on to our topic so web design for musicians um, so as a musician or music organization online presence is um, very important so our school music website and this is just my website you know I I designed this website probably 20 years ago 20 years ago, and I have not changed the design <laughs> um, for good reasons. You know, um, it's a one page static website and it works fine for me, but there are so many ways to design website. So that's why we're uh, going to this topic. So firstly, categories of website. So if you think about internet website, um, what sort of categories are there? The most basic one, uh, such as my website, providing information, static, just text and pictures, that's it. Um, so it's the most simplest website, right? And then next step, collecting information. So once you have a forms, uh, people put in some kind of information, names, email address, um, uh, in some cases, credit card information. So collecting information. So there, this is a huge step up. So providing information is static. Um, not much to uh, worry about in terms of security, but as soon as you start collecting information, there's a huge aspect of security. And then providing communications, you know, partially you're collecting information and also providing uh, interactive uh, communication. Providing services. So that's another level of website. And then selling tangible and or intangible products. 
So as a musician, you might be selling your music track or um, uh, for your fan t-shirts and caps and, you know, uh, Tumblr, stuff like that. That's common. So remember tangible and intangible difference. Tangible means, um, for example, if it's music, CD, hard copy or vinyl, you know, it's a tangible product and the intangible can be downloadable music. And then selling services. So here, you know, in general, not only music, but um, um, selling products and services, there's a little bit difference. So for example, uh, items, products may be taxable. So there's a sales tax involved service. It depends on the states and country, but uh, uh, some don't charge taxes. And then, of course, social networking is a huge aspect of internet these days. Um, selling services, what can you imagine? What kind of service do you imagine? maybe as a musician. And yeah. Maybe a streaming service? Streaming service. Okay. That's correct. Yeah, definitely. What else? Being paid to perform. Being paid in advance. So like, for example, if you're going to perform and being paid, is that what you mean? Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. So in other words, selling tickets, concert tickets, right? Even ticket is maybe tangible paper, but it's, uh, it's actually selling service, right? Um, and air tickets, of course, for air airline business, you know, selling tickets, they are actually selling services. Thinking of these, uh, there are different levels of web design aspects. Like I said, as soon as you start collecting information, security is a big concern, and all of these uh, involve security. Social net networking, of course, you rely on you know social networking uh, organizations, companies, apps. So you don't really need to um, take care of that by yourself. But still, you know, protecting your password and your online assets, that's important security concern. All right, so creating a website planning. So any project, any business uh, planning is a crucial aspect. So purposes, why do we need a website? Think about it, you know, not just because everyone else has a website. Why? And do I really need a website? So you, you, we need to ask ourselves. And then outcomes. So why are we making and then what do we expect uh, because of this website? What kind of outcomes would, would we expect? And then time frame, when to launch? When do we start opening the website? And this one, how long to keep? Most people don't think about it. So that's why there are millions of abundant websites online. Um, you know, I've been, designing websites since 1994 no actually 1992 that was the first website i've created when i was a college student and at that time of course no picture no no video whatsoever just a text-based um, um, online presence but uh, since then i even had a website web design company so technically hundreds of websites I've designed. <clears throat> and so many uh, times I've um, had a um, conversation with people and how many websites are abundant. You know, it's incredible. So it's somewhat important, especially if you're paying for the service. And um, even if you're not using, you know, the company might be keep charging. Or another case is that uh, you designed a website, you're happy for you know several years, and after that, oh, I want to make an update, and uh, the hosting company has been you know bought out by other company and cannot access to your website. That happens quite a bit, you know, forgot the password, things like that. So always think about a little bit long term plan, in terms of time frame, and then budget resources. How much is that going to cost? 
in the short term and long term, especially resources, who is going to actually design it? Who is going to program it? If you have a uh, skill by yourself, that's, that's great. But if not, <clears throat> who's going to take care of it? And a lot of times um, you, you might have a tech uh, guru friends and then you rely on them and uh, make sure you keep in touch with them. <laughs> so um, it's kind of funny. Uh, a couple of days ago, I got an uh, email from um, a longtime friend and uh, and I designed his website seven years ago. And suddenly he uh, he wanted to make an update. So he contacted me and he has no idea where the password is. And fortunately, I had it. So we can update, but things like that happens very often. Now, contents wise, uh, page structure, you need to think about how many pages you want to have, what kind of contents and prepare text information, images. Yeah, images, very important, nice photos that, um, that helps the presence of the website very much. Um, and you as musician sound files, you can utilize SoundCloud or YouTube into your website. So, you know, nowadays you don't really need to stream out um, the media contents from your web server. So utilize, you know, any of those external services. All right, let's talk about uh, domain extensions. So .com, that's the most famous, everyone knows, .net, .org. Um, so some people were wondering .org, does it have to be nonprofit organization? No, all of these, you can buy any of these. So there's no set rule, but originally .com was designed for commercial company. Net was um, mainly for networking company, internet service providers, but nowadays there's no set rule. So you can buy any of those, but obviously com is the most popular one. And that info, that CC, um, that CC uh, stands for, um, it's a country based extension, uh, Cocos Island, Australian territory, but because of, it looks like a creative commons. So some companies like uh, Arduino.cc, they use this uh, CC extension and that music. So there's so many of these, you know, 500 domain extensions exist and then more coming. That music is one of them. It's coming. So, however, that edu, that edu, no, you cannot buy something that edu unless you have um, accredited education institute state. And this in Korea, AC stands for academic South Korea. And the university you have these. That COJP, Japan Corporate. It used to be strict that we had to uh, submit um, uh, proof of cooperation, otherwise you couldn't get it. But nowadays it's loosened up and you can buy it. CNCH, that's confusing. A lot of people think it's China. This one is China uh, extension. So that CH is a Switzerland uh, domain extension. Subdomain name. What is subdomain name? So we have domain name here. Anything before that is called subdomain name. So once you own the main domain name, you can create any subdomain, uh, assign this subdomain to a specific folder or specific web page. So how do we register a domain name? Uh, just the two examples, uh, networksolutions.com, GoDaddy is so huge. Uh, I do have a question. Yeah, sure, go for it. Earlier you were talking about I mean, you would go through another website that has, you know, where you can make your own website through another website, right? But then you have to pay them. And like currently I'm taking a HTML, CSS class. As far as I know, you can publish your own website for free, right? Yes, there are many free services out there. Okay, yeah. Uh, I guess as far as publishing, I would like to know a little bit more, but I don't know if you're going to be speaking about that later on. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Get, getting to it. Okay. okay. So once you have a domain name, you know, you need to think about what domain name would be good. 
next step is how you're going to design the website. There are many ways to do it, but in a big picture, CMS, content management system, whether if you're going to use CMS or not, that's the one decision you're going to have to make. <clears throat> so CMS is probably more popular these days. You know, a long time ago, there, there were not so many great CMS system out there, but now they're so advanced and so great. Uh, so for example, WordPress, that's one um, CMS designed for blog and you can create any kind of website using WordPress. And the beauty is it's free, it's open source. And uh, Wix.com, this is also a very popular website. It's a commercial based. I believe they're an um, Israeli company. Uh, Omni Update. This is what we use, TTU use, Omni Update. So OU University or something. Uh, this is a, a very advanced uh, professional CMS system. So the whole university is relying on this. And if you want to sell something online, um, of course you can utilize Amazon or you know, Yahoo store, but uh, OS Commerce, it's uh, open source system for shopping cart. If you wanna create a shopping cart on your website. And uh, one note here, CMS is usually database driven. So in other words, um, all those web pages are generated through database. So the beauty of CMS is that there's so many users, for example, TTU, many areas, many people are updating the website and sometimes even same web page, multiple people are editing it. So CMS would know and um, would let you check out the document. Okay, so I'm editing this web page. No one else can edit at the same time. So there's a check in, check out system, which is one of the beauty of it. On the other hand, if you don't want to use CMS, basically you're gonna have to use um, HTML or some other language. So it's a coding process is required. And of course, there's some software, the graphical interface software available for known CMS development tools. Adobe Dreamweaver, that's been the most popular, most powerful um, software out there. Alternatively, you could use any text editor, Notepad, Sublime Text, you know, those uh, simple text editor plus FTP client software, like a cute FTP or FileZilla, there are many free applications available. Um, brackets by Adobe, this is um, pretty good, highly recommended text editor for um, HTML. And FileZilla um, is a FTP client software. So Edward, um, what, what software are you using? for HTML? Uh, right now, I'm just doing a text editor to write HTML. It's called um, Sublime Text. Cool, yeah, I love Sublime Text. That's an excellent text editor. Okay, so in terms of language, Yes, still HTML is quite valid. You know, we still use it uh, com in combination with uh, CSS. So CSS um, can give you a style of the web page. Um, you can set a font and uh, uh, page width, background color, stuff like that you can control using CSS in addition to HTML. And JavaScript, pop-up window, uh, having a clock on your web page, uh, all kinds of things you can program using JavaScript. Uh, PHP, a lot of CMS are actually driven through uh, PHP language. Plus, this is a database language, MySQL, MySQL. So, uh, and Java. So JavaScript, Java, those are different things. Um, in some way similar, but uh, uh, JavaScript lives on the web page. Java has to communicate with the server. I'm not going too much detail, but you know, technical things. Uh, Ruby on Rails, that's another popular language for web development. Learning HTML, 
never too late. And uh, uh, you might think it's old fashioned stuff, but it's actually pretty good. And, you know, knowing a little bit HTML helps um, sometimes. So w3schools.com, this is a classic uh, HTML or HTML or any other language learning website, which is pretty cool. I will show you how it looks like. There you go. So this is w3schools.com. Um, I don't know when they launched it. It's been here for a long time. Um, so for example, try it yourself. So this is the HTML code. If you have ne never seen it before. So for example, um, it's a live page here. You can say change the font size, heading size, one, two, three, and then run. You see the font size changed. Um, or if you want to add another HTML code like center and center slash center. So you have to have beginning and this is ending. And these spaces, white space doesn't make any difference in here. So let's run it. So whole thing, these two lines became centered. So essentially, you know, Microsoft Word or any word processor, um, there's a button to center or left justifying. All of those function behind it is this code, HTML or whatever um, language they're using. Uh, it's just doing it for you. So to understand about word processing, this is what's happening behind the scene. Okay, so if you're interested, check it out w3schools.com okay and uh, online security as i mentioned as soon as you start collecting information from your clients customers fans and particularly if you are collecting someone's credit card information ssl is crucial so ssl stands for secure sockets layer and there's a ssl certificate that you can purchase or you can generate by yourself um, HTTP, when you look at the website, any website, here, you see the lock mark, okay? It says connection is secure, right? So that means this website has SSL certificate on the server. So it's running through HTTPS, S stands for secure. So any website without S, that's unsecure. I mean, of course, if you have a static website, it doesn't make any difference. But if you're collecting information, you have to encrypt the traffic between a server and the browser. So this browser means your client, your user, and your server. So in between, any data going between has to be encrypted. Otherwise, for example, credit card number um, can be shown on the little river kind of uh, thing. You know, skilled hackers can see those numbers uh, floating on the river. That's how you, you can imagine, you know, without SSL, every letter, every number would be visible. So this will, even if you don't collect anything, you know, seeing the website, looks like secure then increases the trust of users and also helps seo search engine optimization in other words um, the google search and you know all those search crawler the ai will like your website better than non-secure website so it's a really good idea to look into ssl And once you have a domain name and a strategy for designing website, whether CMS based or non CMS, you, you're going to have to look into web hosting. Um, in other words, a server, you need to put your HTML file onto a web server so that people can access your file online. You know, if it's sitting on your desktop, um, unless you make your computer, local computer accessible from the internet, you know, open up uh, uh, port 80. Yeah, your computer can become a web server. So web hosting companies, um, just a good example, 
godaddy.com. They have many different packages, um, shared server, dedicated servers. And of course, prices are different. <clears throat> and traffic, how much traffic <clears throat> do you expect? So if you have hundreds, thousands of fans visiting your website every day, then you're going to have to think about <clears throat> a little bit um, faster connection to your server. Um, are you going to have multiple domain names? Um, for example, uh, hidekisoda.com, .net, .org. Uh, if you want to host all of those, uh, then uh, some you know services allow you to host multiple domains. Costs and contract. How long do you have to you know stick with this company? And one thing I want you to be aware is that uh, usually all of these companies provide pretty low price at the beginning, but then end of a year or two the price goes up to a normal price and which is much much higher than initial price and um, so that's going to be your cost for annual cost um, after two years so that's something you need to look at it's the same deal for the um, domain name as we talked about before so domain name to get a dot com what would you expect to pay for a, a .com domain name per year. Does anyone know? So roughly $15 to $20 per year, depends on the company. But some company would offer uh, either free or a dollar, $2 a year. And then, you know, a lot of people go, wow, that's so cheap compared to $20 a year. And then you jump in and then you make a contract um, and after a year or two, you know, it goes up to uh, normal pricing or even higher. Be careful on that. Kind of have to think about long-term uh, expense. And after you have a website up and running, online marketing. Yeah, I was just going to quickly talk about marketing stuff here. So SEO, search engine optimization. So it's the process affecting the visibility of a website or a particular web page in the search engines, unpaid results, often referred to as natural or organic results. Behind the web page, there's a description tag you can create. Uh, of course, the title of the web page is important and how often it's uh, updated. If you, you know, look into, you can increase the ranking of the web search engine. So if you search a violinist, for instance, on Google, who's gonna come up first? If the management company doing really good job on SEO, they might come up higher ranking rather than you know doing nothing. So somewhat important. And uh, social media networking, absolutely. Email marketing, referral marketing, web analytics, this is also important. Basically, you get statistics of who is visiting your website, how they're using your website. And there's a really good tool, um, which I'll talk about a little bit. And then display ad advertising, pay-per-click, contextual advertising, behavioral targeting, affiliate marketing. So for example, someone bought um, a particular brand of shoes. And all of a sudden, this person start getting email advertisement of shoes or on your Google page. For some reason, there are a lot of more advertisement about shoes. I'm sure you've experienced that. So that's behavioral targeting or contextual advertising. So there's an AI behind it. And also, you know, there's a little bit of um, touchy issue about uh, privacy and stuff. But there are many ways to um, understand your customer's behavior online. Google provides this free service, Google Analytics. It's wonderful. You can um, check who is accessing your website, for how long, which page is most popular. All the details will be uh, displayed. So that's something to utilize.
couple of online marketing tools. So in combination with your website, uh, Facebook page, Instagram, uh, YouTube channel, um, constantcontact.com. This one, particularly uh, email marketing company. So you subscribe their service and you can send to 10,000 people by one click. Contactus.com and HubSpot. Many big companies are using this HubSpot. It's a marketing tool and it's called inbound marketing and sales. So that includes CRM, customer relationship management software. So um, yeah, these are all behind the scene. You know, you have a website, but you need to have many different tools attached to it and uh, to make it successful online presence. So one question, most valuable data online, uh, what do you think that is in terms of marketing? A consumer's personal information? Yeah, personal information. Um, you know, it used to be an email address because you can do direct, direct marketing, but it's really changing. As you say, you know, behavioral targeting, contextual advertisement, these are so powerful. Customers' behavior, their preferences, those information so valuable these days. And there are many companies selling and buying those information. You know, so be careful when you when you uh, sign up on a free service. And usually in the disclaimer, uh, it says your information will be sold or shared with other companies. I will probably continue, but uh, I want you to share with us um, what website you have. And I've got one website from, there we go. Yeah, one of your uh, fellow students um yeah he he sent me this link it's pretty cool and his music is really interesting he's a country musician obviously so and looks like he made his website using wix.com all right who wants to share your uh, favorite or your own website i'm gonna give you a uh, screen share um i can go all right okay let me share my screen so i actually have my own um because i'm in two web design classes this semester mm -hmm. um but it's not completely done yet but it's like halfway so why not yeah okay you should be able to open yeah. there we go excellent so it's a portfolio site um it's one of our final assignments that we have to do. Um, we basically just have to make one um, showcasing our work and we have to use Dreamweaver, right? Adobe Dreamweaver. And um, yeah, I'm not really, I can't really do this part yet. I'm kind of struggling on that part. Hmm. But yeah, that's pretty much it so far. Um, right? Yeah. Wonderful. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for sharing. So you're yeah. running off um, on your web website. I mean, uh, on your local machine, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. One else want to share your favorite website or your own website? Yeah, I'll go. All right. Here's Joe. Okay, um, recently in our voice error title, we just had a, a artist come and talk to us about like their personal websites, like what we should include. And one of the ones I found interesting was a counter tenor that I follow, and his name is Kangreen. Go ahead and show the desktop. Let's see. Can you see the website? Mm -hmm. Perfect. I thought it was really cool. Like he, like his is more of like an updated version of like, cause a lot of our vocalists right now have like a very, what seems outdated, but it just shows all of like his recent work and like what he's doing right now, um, what he's, his discography as well. Like, and it just gives you like information depending on what, you, what you're going to his website for. Yeah, all right. 
and it's got a Facebook, you know, Twitter and all these links. Uh, contact information. Yep. Yeah, great example. So it might be interesting to find out what kind of CMS um, he's using. You know, mm -hmm. if you go into the source, um, sometimes you can find out. Okay, maybe not. All right. Oh, I have one I can share. Oh, yeah, yeah, go for it. Okay, so this is the like website that I bought my face mask from that I wear. Uh -huh. um, it's because brand called Everbrand. The face mask itself is really good, but the website is like for this product is super cool. It includes like all this on the right and left and the colors, but I really like how you it shows like all of these pictures of the mask and like people wearing them and like the the interface and like how it shows all the pictures. I thought it was really cool and like the website itself convinced me to actually like buy the like pull the trigger and buy the mask. So Oh, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. So again, you know, um, if you can find out what kind of um, backbone, back system, uh, CMS or um, shopping mall um, they're using, that's interesting uh, for us. It says they're using Shopify. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you, you know, if you make your web own website, um, share with us someday. And uh, yeah, all the best as a musician or whatever business you're into in the future. Hopefully this um, little information will help you get started. All right, so um, just one thing, the assignment about um, uh, notation using MuseScore, um, if you could submit um, by the end of this week, I'll, I'll set up a Blackboard where you can submit um, the Muse score file so I can see how you um, did the notation. So let's do it that way. Okay, I think that's, that's all for this week. So please do take care and then um, see you next week. Bye.